files of the internet. My name is Adriana and today I'm here to commemorate the fact that on this day, a year ago, I started a booktube channel called Perpetual Pages. I know I say this at the risk of sounding cliche, but I honestly can't believe that it's already been a year since I uploaded my first video. Back then, I was very shy and quiet. I had no idea how my equipment worked. I was filming on my webcam. This bookshelf was just a dream. It didn't even exist then. I was filming in my sister's room, but I'm so glad that I didn't let any of that stop me because I just realized there's never a good time to say to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. Now that I'm a little more of an established voice on booktube, I have considered many times making my first video unlisted, but you're welcome to watch it. It's still there, I'll link you to it. It's not good, it's not my best work, but it would be a lie if I took that video down because that's where I started. And so kind of in celebration of this momentous day of this first booktube anniversary, of this first milestone, I would like to take you through perpetual pages in numbers. So I went through my videos and I went through my Goodreads and I compiled some stats, which I think are pretty freaking cool. So let's start with the big one. Since joining booktube this day a year ago, I have read 375 books. Of course, that's only accurate up to the day that I'm filming this video, but holy crap, that's a lot of reading. Moving on, the total number of videos that I have uploaded to Perpetual Pages, including this one, is 96. Honestly, I probably would have passed 100 already, but I did delete some of my older videos which had like copyright flags and stuff like that. So because of that, I have uploaded 96 videos videos, but there are 96 videos that I am very proud of, and that's a pretty solid number. Next, let's talk about how many series I've completed since starting booktube. Of course, this only applies to series that are completed, that are out in their entirety, and of course, I also included duologies. So that being said, I have completed about 15 series over the course of my first year on booktube. So I'm really happy about that because that number embodies very iconic series that I really love, like Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Girl of Fire and Thorns, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, Full Metal Alchemist, Oran High School host, club and so many more. So another really interesting thing I looked into was how many books I rated one star, two star, three star, etc. So over the past year I have only awarded two books one star or one and a half star. Which is not to say those are the only one stars I've ever rated a book, but I think that's a significant improvement. Over the past year I've only awarded 10 books two or two and a half stars. Ideally I would like to see that number drop in the future Future, but you know, I don't feel bad about the books that I had to rate two stars because you know what? I'm only being honest. So as far as three or three and a half stars, which is still a very respectable rating in my opinion, I have given that to 49 books. Again, I would like to see that number drop in the future, but you know, I did what I had to do. Next, we're gonna talk about the big one, which is how many books have I awarded four stars or four and a half stars? I have given a hundred books over the last year, four stars or four and a half stars. And I think that's because I really have a good grasp of my reading taste and I know myself very well. And I do a lot of research so that usually before I even start a book, I know whether I'll like it or not, and obviously I try to read books that I'm gonna love. And lastly, let's talk about the very highly coveted five-star rating. I have given 43 books over the last year five stars, and these include gems like The Coldest Girl in Cold Town, Deathless by Catherine M. Valente, A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, some volumes of Attack on Titan by Hajime Isayama, some volumes of Full Metal Alchemist by Hiromu Arakawa, Aristotle and Dante, Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alirez Sáenz, Dreams of Gods and Monsters,
Monsters by Lainey Taylor, the list goes on. And most importantly, let's talk about some new favorite authors that BookTube helped me discover. And these are authors who I had either never heard of until I joined BookTube or I had never tried reading one of their books until I joined BookTube. All in all, over the past year, I have discovered 22 new favorite authors, which is crazy. To name some of these authors, they're like Brandon Sanderson, Victoria Schwab, Robin Schneider, Hajime Isayama, Patrick Ness, Holly Black, Lainey Taylor, Benjamin Alire Sayens, Ray Carson, Morgan Matson, Gillian Flynn, Hiromo Arakawa, Julie Kagawa, Madeline Miller, Haruki Murakami, Celeste Ng, Anne Leckie, and so much more. So those are some of the numbers and stats that dictate what I've read or what I've done on my channel over the past year, but now I'd like to talk about more of the intangibles of being on booktube. I've never really talked about it, but I started booktubing during a very tough time in my life. And I know that expression, tough time in my life, is very cliche and very vague, but I don't really want to talk about it. I had stumbled upon booktube itself probably a year before I started making my own videos, and I finally felt like it was this space, this community of people who totally understood where I was coming from because reading has always been a huge part of my life. And I couldn't believe that so many people were making videos about books. It seemed like something that I could finally do. I started booktubing kind of out of desperation. I needed a lifeline. I needed a space where I could be myself and remind myself of who that was, a place where I felt it was safe to air my opinions and to reach out to other people and to find people who felt similarly to me. And I really needed a place that I could claim as my own, that I could feel that validation and feel like, yes, this is mine, I'm proud of it, what I have to say, matters to somebody. Because I had allowed certain people or certain situations to trick me into believing that I didn't matter as a person, that my voice didn't matter, that there was nothing about me that was special or that was mine. I had really lost sight of who I was and what I loved and that was reading and I needed a place where I could reclaim all of that. And I don't think many of you fully understand what you've given to me as a creator, not even as a creator, as a person. And like a lot of people have said, BookTube saved me. BookTube gave me so much confidence. It gave me so much power and it reminded me of who I am, who I want to be, how I want to present myself how I want other people to see me, and that's I want people to see the real me, which is what I've put here in my channel. And it seems kind of silly, but being on booktube has given me so much power and so much strength, and it's really given me the confidence to make sometimes drastic decisions in my life and change my life for the better. Over the one short year that I've been on booktube, I've become a better reader, a better writer, and a better human being. It's like, how do you even put a price on that, put a value on that? It's so much more than you ever think is gonna happen when you upload that first video. I don't really know what I'm trying to say other than thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for me without even realizing it. And more than anything else that I've said in this video, Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for opening up to me. Thank you for welcoming me into this community. Thank you for watching this video. I mean it every single time I say it. I really hope you've enjoyed the content that I've put out over the past year. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope there are many more happy years ahead of me on BookTube. And as always, I will catch you on the flip side of the page.